Okay, so we are at the Best Friends Animal Sanctuary in Kanab, Utah. Um, as you can see from my eyes, I'm being gassed inside my cabin. Um, I mean, you can clearly see my eyeballs, right? Um, I cut my hair the other day. I think I already remarked that on video. I don't care anymore. I mean, what do I have to care about? I can't even do anything, <laughs> I mean, in my life, you know? I can't get, I can't go anywhere without these people. It's insanity. And what was weird is I was just standing, I was just laying here and I um, heard stuff up on the roof, the ceiling, and the roof. And I went out and looked there, and there was nothing there. <laughs> I can't tell if there would be any room up there, but it just rem reminds me of being in Hawaii, and literally all of me and my animals at that time, Kitty was alive, uh, hearing noises coming from the attic, and then going up there and not finding anything. I mean, loud noises. And, I mean, there were no rats up there. There were no, we don't have raccoons or rac raccoons or, we don't have anything like that. It would need to be a rat. And there were no rats up there. No, we had not even any rat droppings. Just a ton of dead cockroaches. A ton. Um, anyhow, um, the animals are just totally fucking wigged, and in these moments, I'm like, <laughs> if I seriously talk about demons and stuff, then I look like an insane person, and I get that, because <laughs> there's no proof that those things exist, um, and the behavior may seem demonic, because it's evil and crazy and all this other shit. Um, but that doesn't make them literal demons, you know what I mean? So, but it makes me think about when I was thinking about, you know, giving away the dogs and then going and getting help at a facility, which it's just really hard to find one that doesn't have a bunch of drug addicts and I don't want to be around them. I really don't. I think we should stop trying to even help any of those people. Um, pretty much. Just very few of them, maybe. Um, but they ask, like, do you hear things that other people don't hear? Do you see things that other people don't see? And I'm thinking, how do I answer this? Because I understand the implication of the answers. Like, see things that people don't see? I mean, do I notice things that other people may not notice? That's different. You know, am I saying there's someone standing here by this door? No. <laughs> and if somebody were to say, you know, do you see someone there? I don't see someone there. You know, that, very plain and simple. Do I see, you know, did I hear a vehicle drive up last night? And You know, or do I, you know, when I'm parked in a parking lot and they all start to surround me and stuff, then if there was somebody else there and they're like, I don't see anything, I'd be like, huh, wow, shit. Maybe I'm in trouble if I trusted that person, right? So, which, you know, I mean, most people would be, that'd be pretty fucked up to do that. Um, um, do I hear things that other people don't hear? That's like a hard one too, because it's like, I think because I've literally been being stalked and terrorized um and this is probably a scientific fact that you do your sensory stuff just is different because you're in this like fight or flight mode all the time and so could you hear things that like if you think of a woman that's been is being beaten in her home right by her husband and at some point, your sensory stuff is going to start to clue in on certain sounds that you're going to associate with 
uh, fear or danger or something like that, right? Like, I don't know, maybe just the opening of the garage door or, or a dog barking from next door or, you know, that means that that person's over there or whatever. Um, so yeah, I actually do feel like I can hear stuff that I don't think necessarily other people can't hear, but that my <clears throat> senses have tuned into. Um, so I have a dilemma. Even if I were to want to give away my dogs, which I really, really don't, and I really can't figure out how that has to happen, but then I can't figure out another way. Um, there's people at this facility that are helping these people, most likely in the housekeeping, which is going to be people who probably didn't get the job here because they want to work with animals, per se. Maybe a few of them, but most of them it's just a job. They're obviously the biggest employer in the entire city. Um, so, you know, and I tried to explain that to one of the people that work here. Um, <laughs> weird. Um, yeah, I literally just picked up my hair and then just like, didn't even look in the mirror or anything. <laughs> I was just like, this seems like I have enough hair left. Um, I'm rolling with it. Um, uh, so am I hearing stuff up there that other people wouldn't hear? Probably not. Like, I'm guessing if somebody else were in here and they were just sitting and they had their auditory sensory kind of tuned in to listening to any sound and sort of maybe on high alert or even just, I don't know. And yeah, I don't I don't think I'm hearing things that other people wouldn't hear. I just think that my body is now like it's always listening for, you know, the sounds of other vehicles, um those vroom vroom cars, like those things in probably other people's lives are just like these passing things that go through their experience and so there's not like, you know, you might be able to say, "Oh, did you just hear that car like 5 minutes later and they pee, like, hmm, what? Like, because they're not thinking about it. They're not focusing on it. They're not, um, you know. It just, things are so much more complicated than trying to simply say, like, you know, this person hears things and another person doesn't hear, you know? There's just so much more to that and... Um, is there room up there for her to crawl around up there <laughs> considering that I like, never found her in Hawaii like I figured out months after maybe that was the drugs maybe it was just because I was kind of terrified or combination or whatever but then I realized there was a dropped ceiling like that you could get to from the attic um, where I put in skylights and when I saw that girl she could definitely fit in there not comfortably and when I finally, after months of hearing her up there and not being able to find her, I finally just cut a hole in the drywall, which was kind of crazy because I tried to figure out how to get in there and it was just small. And I guess, I don't know. I don't know why I decided to do that instead of going through each little area that it could have, that you could open into any of the dropped ceiling areas. But that's what I chose, and when I opened it, it smelled like homeless person. It smelled like her smell. And now, by the way, it's patchouli. She's doing patchouli again, I guess, because she probably had plenty of patchouli and cannab. Um, <laughs> I hate the smell of patchouli. I don't know why. I just don't like it. Never did. Um, I don't really like smells, period, that aren't like, you know, like cologne, blah, blah, perfume. I never really wore that stuff. Um, people have their own natural smells, which, again, would that be something I smell that other people don't smell? Because I don't think so. Um, like, I had a boyfriend who just loved my personal smell. Like, he'd, like, just 
put his nose right on my forehead and just inhale and inhale and inhale, which was, you know, I was like, that's cool, whatever. Um, didn't weird me out. Um, because I get smells, like, everybody does have their own smell. And some of their smells are perfume or whatever, if that's what they wear all the time or whatever. But there's also other smells. Um, anyhow, <laughs> I'm weirded out. I'm really weirded out. And I'm like, I don't, I feel drugged. And I've been in here, we took a walk for maybe like an hour, um, just out of the cabin and just kind of tromped around up there. Um, their uh, their cabins were all full last night and now they're all gone. And supposedly there's all new people coming in. Um... My body does not feel like it's been gang raped and sodomized. Uh, whether it was messed with last night, I don't know. I had to sleep. I was going to sleep and then wake up and then drink coffee and try to stay awake all night again. But um, the daytime isn't really feeling like, oh, this will be safety here. Because there hasn't been anybody here since I um, got up at like 10. There's been nobody here. There's no vehicles, no nothing. They all left. And I thought they would be coming back, like maybe they were volunteering or whatever, and they'd be coming back, but they haven't come back. So, that plan would suck anyways. But yeah, but I couldn't. Two, two nights in a row of just not sleeping, really, until 7 to like 10. And then maybe getting in, yeah. It just it's not enough so I'm not a methamphetamine smoker but I'm very worried about the dogs I'm super super worried um, just the look on their faces and their eyes like it's just gone like the way they used to look and the way they used to look at me and just gone you know and then just like, you know, like I was on the bed over here and I'd gotten some chips and guacamole that I bought yesterday and I put the chip bag down and Miho just like jumped from the sound of the chip bag. Um, so I'm not the only one that's, the auditory has become very intense because it's, and then the whites of their eyes and just, they're just in fear and they don't feel well and I think the drugs have just cooked their brains and made them I don't know I know I feel that way like I was standing outside having a smoke and I'm like I don't even feel normal anymore like I can't like I always feel like I'm on drugs like and I just can't And I don't know what to do. I need help. And I don't understand why no one wants to help someone that's being gang raped and sodomized and tortured. And if you guys don't believe me... <sighs> shit. <clears throat> well, I mean, that would mean really shitty stuff for probably my animals and for me. But... I don't know. <laughs> I just can't see this all playing out very well for future, future people or situations or whatever. Because I don't see that these people are going to only do these things to me. Like there was a red SUV parked out there at some point when I got up. I looked out the window. This is the whole cabin. It's a studio. I actually perfect love it. I love the size of it. I was like, this is so perfect. Like it's like I mean it's like living in a camper. <laughs> like this is about as much space as you'd have for all this stuff and maybe, you know, except for that, maybe. Um, but Vida. Vida, can you get up? You wanna go? You wanna go outside? Wanna go outside? 
Do you see so much white of Neo's eye? It's like nuts. Vida, want to go outside? Can you get up? Vida. I'm just, this is horrible. Now it's getting really cold in here, even though it's set for 75 degrees. Um, because I had the windows open trying to dispel this shit because I was coughing and it's sneezing and, you know, all the signs. Anyhow, I think I'm going to take them out for some sort of walk and then Crack Whore will come in here and do whatever she's going to do to that, all this stuff <laughs> to try to make us sicker and so she can, I guess, bring in lots of people to gang rape me tonight. I don't know. Do something weird, undoubtedly. I have no idea how this works. Don't ask me. It's so funny. I just like, literally cut my hair myself. Um, I don't know how this works. I really don't. And I don't know what to say about it either. I don't have any answers and I have to figure something out at some point. <laughs> I have to. So.